Join us here with Coffee and News with Doc and Jenny. Coffee and News is a part of the Amateur Radio Network. Introducing Doc and Jenny after this. Coffee with George and Jenny is a part of the Amateur Radio Network. All right, you see these symbols, and you know right off the bat uh, that this is um, a way to bring down the elections and bring down the nation. And I want to introduce the topic tonight, or today, (laughs) on um, the protests that are going on throughout the United States now. uh, George is going to be coming in on the show here in one moment, and he's going to give us historical context. You can see also the headlines, a uh, Drudge Report, uh, Urban Warfare, and this is all before Tuesday. So apparently the elections are pretty important, and what happens in the United States does matter. And George, you're going to uh, come in here right now. We're going to welcome George back to the show. Thank you, George, hey. for joining the program. How you doing, Jenny? You know, I, I've, been, I've been alive a long time, Jenny. I saw things firsthand when I was a young man. And I can tell you, you know, like, for example, I was married to my college sweetheart, a real small gal, for nine years. Nine and a half years, we had a happy marriage. Within six months, it fell apart. And the reason it fell apart was because by our very thing that's going on today. The year was 1965, I remember well, when we got married. Well, something significant happened in 65. You know, we had, if you go back in our history, you can plot big changes from 1965. Uh, No-fault divorce was passed. The board Kennedy... Uh, convinced the Congress to throw the immigration quotas out the window and basically throw the borders wide open to anybody and everybody to come in here with no, basically, little or no restrictions. And a lot of feminist uh, legal ideas were pushed on our culture, and they bought this dogma, this poison. Now, where did this start from? Well, it started from the Civil Rights Bill in 62, 63, you know, and the whole idea of the Civil Rights Bill was to help black males get traction. Well, the Southern Senators, knowing that this bill was primarily in the South, were very clever buggers, and they said, let's add as a rider women onto that bill. Make them an oppressed minority, ex-slaves and all that. And that way, they have so many women working in those factories in the North, that we'll give them a taste of their own medicine, and they were successful in doing that. So now, privileged white women who were never slaves or anything else were now the equivalent of blacks, which meant an employer, in order to fulfill the government quotas, could hire a white woman. You didn't have to hire a black man. And if you hired a black woman, that was two clicks, a woman and a black. So they completely undercut the whole thrust of the civil rights movement. So now you had feminists who up till then had been obscure little group in a corner that nobody paid a whole lot of attention to with their lesbian activities and their 
crazy dogma. They need, but now we're doing front and center stage, and we're giving a blank check to run wild in the country. And from 65 on, they passed no fault divorce, and this lawyers. The divorce rate exploded. It was no longer father and mother's best. Ozzy and Harriet, the Donna Reed show, all those programs were one after another eliminated and replaced by the glory of single motherhood and, and lesbian relationships and all the stuff we have today on TV. Well, across the board, uh, in the universities, in the high schools, the kids were taught to be ashamed of the United States. It was founded by uh, old white men, slave owners, who never did anything any good, and this Constitution was just crap, and on and on. Now, after you have, then of course, you know, like I say, with broken families, 60 million abortions being promoted, we kill 60 million of our own citizens, and we bring in 60 million illegals because we have no workers, and the whole tragic story goes on and on for decades, decades, Jimmy. It goes on until we end up with a whole army. And, I, and then the Vietnam War came out. Oh, boy, that was the biggie. The Vietnam War. Well, they organized an army to fight against the war. And they were very successful, you know, these young people, in stopping the war. Well, that army never disbanded. They just put their signs in their basements and their all the protest gear. And then the next cause was feminism. After the war was stopped, they said, well, we're not going to disband the army. We'll go and... So they rioted about feminism. Well, it went on like that, one issue after another. The army never disbanded. Uh, climate control, you know. And now, of course, it's this this individual being allegedly uh, done in by a police officer in Minneapolis. So now the army comes out of their basins with their ready-made signs, their organization, and they're all ready to go again. And the idea is to get Donald Trump, the white supremacist, as far as they're concerned. They've been propagandized in the school systems, the high schools, the universities, to hate their own country. And, of course, Trump symbolizes traditional USA, so they hate him. And they're a target fixation about getting rid of him at any cost. So we have to spin every, every event into an anti-Trump deal or a white supremacist deal. And that's what's going on, Jenny. You have a product of decades yeah. of, of, of left-wing, particularly feminist intrigue, manifesting itself. They've been mass-producing these young people, brainwashing them horribly in these, not only high school, junior high, grade school. Mm. I mean, 12 years of brainwashing in the public school system, followed by at least four more years of super brainwashing on the so-called college campuses and graduate school it gets even worse. And then out in the streets, one phone, ten people make a phone call, each of those people make ten phone calls, and before you know it, you've got a thousand people meeting at, at 33rd and Line or wherever in every city with ready-made signs, and they're ready to scream and yell, and they've got all these, you know how, how well equipped they are with masks? I mean, this is a, this is resembles an organized army. This isn't just a, an organic, spontaneous thing by citizens. No, this thing, this army never disbanded, Jenny, from from the days of the 1960s. You know, it's just been recreated, reinvented, repackaged, and the latest gig is get Donald Trump at any cost. And that is basically what is going on here. All right. Oh yeah, and then they call anyone that has uh, is black that has a idea what's going on. They call them Uncle Toms, and they deflect from what the conversation really is about is a dialogue. And you notice, like when I showed you guys the uh, the headlines for the Drudge Report and the symbol, those were all um, painted on the places where there was looting and it, it, it's it's sick to watch the looting it's sick to watch the what a disgrace um after what george floyd and his family have been through um i i'm i'm saddened that their family has suffered and and then 
to see this exploited because that's really what is going on is you're saying that these groups have been well organized for years and they're just waiting for an opportunity to bring this country down this way and that's yeah, what yeah. A, a lot of reports have been about can I say something Jay? sure go ahead. It's, it, it's the country was really that bad baseball it's a big planet Jenny I've been overseas I see how other people live you know there's planes trains boats uh, and everything else leaving every day for anywhere you want to go. Nobody is stopping any citizen in the United States with a passport to go anywhere in the world to find paradise. And if this country is that horrible, well, instead of raging in the streets and burning cities down, why just buy yourself an airline ticket and take your bank account or part of it and go to Africa, go to the Middle East, go to the brown countries, go to these third world countries and find paradise and live happily ever after. You know, they never do that. They, they don't seem to want to leave this so-called racist hellhole that they think the United States is founded by white, old white men, slave owners. They still stay here. They go to our universities. They... They, they, they sit around in coffee shops. They're going to somehow overthrow the country, but they never have a plan as to what they're going to replace it with. I haven't yet seen any of them other than anarchy, other than tear it all down, blow it up, burn down the, the, the stores, you know, steal everything in, from Target. Other than that, I don't, I don't see any plan coming out of these people other than pandemonium. So, you know... I, it's hard to believe they're for real as far as really creating a better world. It sounds like a bunch of spoiled brats who've been brainwashed to, to, to just be disruptive. They're, they're useful idiots for a grand conspiracy of some kind. You know, our enemies to overthrow the United States and they use this ignorance and innocence of youth so easily. You know, it's so easy to persuade young people. You get them in a classroom. They're, they're uh, an audience, you know, they can't go anywhere. They paid a ton of money to be there. And then you feed them this cleverly contrived, you know, I mean, the Nazis proved how easy it was to create Hitler Youth. They took perfectly beautiful German children who loved their parents, and within six months they had them believing that the state was their parents and turning in their own parents to go to the death camps. I mean, you can look at movies like Swing Kids or any of you know, the Lord of the White Rose, and it's all right there. I mean, and they were so successful in brainwashing an entire intelligent, well-educated nation. I mean, Germany was on a par with anybody in the world as far as education, and yet they were so successful in uh, brainwashing the people of Germany, particularly the young people, in that Hitler Youth Program, and they turned them into the worst fanatics you ever ran into. We asked our soldiers, they fought those kids, 16, 17, 18 year old kids, they would never surrender. You know, I mean, they were the most fanatical, brainwashed group you ever ran into. And that is exactly what you have going on in these schools, these public school systems, this university system. That's where a, a lot of the media, look at the media, the brainwashing going on. Don Lemon and the Cuomo and the rest of these. You see them wearing masks on TV, but yet they lecture everybody else about not, the president about not wearing a mask. I mean, they're idiots. And they're fools. Oh, yeah. and, oh, yeah. and they're, propaganda, they're propagandists. And oh, they yeah. get out of there and they just feel this hatred of, of Trump yeah. every single day. It goes to the other. It goes to the other topic of the uninformed voters. A lot of these people don't really know what they don't really know what they're getting themselves into. They're not very informed, and there's a lot of people that are innocently trying to understand. And you, as an educator, it may take a couple times to explain it, but there's a lot of people that they'll go into a voting booth and they'll just hit any button, you know. They don't really know what they're getting themselves into. And, and voting is a privilege and a right, but it doesn't mean you should go in there and just vote for just anyone. You should know what you're getting yourself into. And this is right before the election. So do you think 
that because it's right before the election that it's it's ironic that the anarchists took full advantage of this? Oh, yeah. And, and, and you know, if this doesn't work, if the rats, the rats over this uh, incident in Minneapolis doesn't work, they have another, they have a playbook. And they have pages, they have people who sit around and dream up cockamamie nonsense, and they'll just go to the next page and say, okay, here's what we try next. We tried the virus, that didn't work. We tried the riot in Minneapolis, that didn't work. Here we go. And I guarantee within a week, CNN, MSNBC, and the anarchists, as you call them, will be out in the street with, a, with different signs that they'll paint up and will say, Trump is a blah, blah, and we got a riot, and, you know, keep, the idea is keep the chaos up, have everybody believe that Trump is, is evil and anything but a, uh, a, anything but a child of God and somehow get him defeated. That's what they're focused on. They have target fixation about getting rid of Donald Trump. And everything from now to election day is going to be, that army is going to be out of the streets for one reason or another, rioting. And boy, this thing with this Minneapolis incident has given them, and they think, an opportunity to go crazy and, you know, and do what they're doing. And then Trump is going to tweet, and then they're going to counter Oh, look what he said! He's stealing the lie! Oh my God! It's white supremacist doing this! Uh, the Minneapolis, you know, governor, wherever he was, mayor, uh, mayor. shooting his mouth off of but, you know, white supremacists are really doing this. I mean, it's, it's gotten to be laughable anymore and so predictable as to, as to what's going on here. And, you know, we as American citizens have got to rein in these spoiled children of ours which is what they really are. They, they have the best life in the entire world. They can sit around in coffee shops or park their butts in some university and party nonstop, basically, and dream up the next, the next protest they're going to go to. You know what I mean? Yep. And there's a lot of people I know. Personally, I know people that are paid. This is what they do for a living. Yep. And I personally exactly. know somebody very close to me who uh, goes to these events and they get a 401k plan. They have a, a dental plan. They have it all. They're actually on a salary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. mean, this is, that's not, that's not a joke either. Well, you know, Jenny, if they were in Africa or the Middle East or South America, they'd be working so hard every day just to put a few scraps of bread on the table. They wouldn't have time to be protesting much. But in this country, we are so wealthy, these rich, privileged, and even not so rich young people on welfare or whatever, in payment, student loans, they don't have all the time in the world to sit around. They're so bored with their college crapola and their, their women's studies programs that they can, when they get radicalized, they can plan the next demonstration. And they sit around hatching, like I said, in their playboy playbook. Hey, what's the next scam we can run on Trump, you know? And I guarantee you, they got 10 pages waiting in that book, waiting to be played out. If one well, doesn't work, you just turn the page, and, and we go to another game plan of how to get Trump, another issue, you know, whether it's Orange Man, or his son, or his Slovenian wife, or some woman saying... Trump smiled at me 35 years ago. I felt offended and raped by his eyes. And then they'll play that up. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. feminism. I mean, it, it never ends, you know, it, and it won't end. Even after he's re-elected, I guarantee you they'll be trying to impeach him again for something. I oh, guarantee yeah. it. And his entire second term... There will be demonstrations. There will be this. There will be accusations. There will be every cockamamie. Every time something happens in a country as big as the USA, you know, a country our size, there's always something going on. Well, it's we're wrapping it up here in a minute, but it's been a good discussion. You really gave us some history about that, and it's comforting to know that we we know the truth, you know? That this isn't something that, that 
no one's saying that what happened to George Floyd was acceptable. Um, what it, it is, though, is that anarchists took full advantage of this right before the election, and it's predictable. We just sat there. I was watching Fox News earlier, and Van Jones was mentioned in the Drudge Report. So um, you got the last word, George, here. You got about a minute, and we can well, wrap it up. We used to have a country where the adults ran the country, particularly the uh, good and worthy men. And now we have a country where the children are running the country, apparently, you know, are trying to run it. And, this, you know, Saul Linsky said, whoever owns the streets owns the agenda. And who owns the agenda owns the government. And we see and what's we going to, on right now. That's, that's, that that's exactly it. The, that's exactly the, play, the page they're playing out of Saul Linsky. They're trying to own the streets, own the agenda, and get rid of Donald Trump. And, you know, we got to wake up as adult men, particularly, yep. to get back our role as yep. fathers, husbands, and leaders in this country, right. instead of sitting back and let a bunch of crazy feminists tell us that we're no good and we're all rapists, unconvicted rapists, and all the sort of nonsense that they've peddled since 1965, and, you know, and yeah. throw that yoke on back and get back to, to get busy operating this great nation in the, in, the, in the truest sense like it once was. It was a good and fair place where everybody in the entire world wanted to come to and live in. And there well, was a reason, and it wasn't because it was a racist, horrible, nasty place full of white racists. It was a land of opportunity and milk and honey, and the whole damn world was trying to get in here. You know, from all these black and brown Okay, and we're wrapping countries. it up. Yeah, so, th that's there, that's there, it for yeah. our broadcast. But thank you so much, uh, George, because you offered so much insight. Thank you, guys. I'm glad. Adios. Adios, amigos. We ride for the border. <laughs> Coffee and News is a part of the Amateur Radio Network. <laughs>